Hello and welcome back. Well, before I begin today's video, I have some questions for all of you. Do you enjoy playing sports? Any sports? For that matter, do you enjoy playing video games? Talking about video games, have you ever wondered how your character or whatever character you're playing with moves from one end to another? How does it identify the location? And let's not forget all these uh, cinematic things that we watch, whether that's a movie or a picture, it has music in the background to add to the effect, right? So much so even my videos at the beginning have music. How is a music composed? What goes behind the composition of a music? What about sound waves? How does a robot hear sound? How do we even make a robot? How do we fly planes? How does an astronaut know which celestial body or space scientist, how do they know that which celestial body is how far from another celestial body? Forget about the space. Let's come on land and understand what goes behind the programming of a GPS system that we are now very commonly using as a navigation. Like it's so common, it's on our phones, it's on all devices, and of course it's in the cars too. So why am I telling you all of that? Why am I asking these questions? Well, the question lies in the title of the video. <laughs> well, of course, trigonometry. And it is trigonometry which is, in a sense, present in our day-to-day -day life. We use it so much on a daily basis and don't even realize we actually are. Don't worry, this video is not about the applications of trigonometry and how it applies, but what we are going to learn is the basic trigonometric ratios. So <laughs> we will leave the applications for another video in future, but right now let's focus on the basics. So trigonometry or the trigonometric ratios form the foundational ideas or concepts that apply to our real life in a lot of ways. And how does it begin with the ratios that we have already learned on one of my prior videos I mentioned. And yes, the link is in the description for you to go check it out. So on one of my prior videos, I did mention sine, cosine, tangent. But there are three additional ratios, secant, cosecant, and cotangent that we are going to talk about on this particular video. So in summary, totally there are six trigonometric ratios that help us Actually, they rule our life, day-to-day -day life. All the things that we are using, even me making this video and getting out there, is a result of trigonometry at some stage. So without waiting further, let's go ahead and get started and learn the three new trigonometric ratios. All right, I'll see you. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. As you can see on the screen, I've already written out uh, the three trigonometric ratios that we have learned before. So here it is. So I'm, I'll just go over it one more time. So sine, and the short form for sine is going to be sine, S-I-N, cosine, cos, tangent is written as tan. The three new additional trigonometric ratios are going to be, that I mentioned in my introduction, are going to be cosecant, which is in short form written as C-S-C, -S -C, secant, written as S-E-C as short form, and cotangent, which is written as simply cot as a short form. So here are the six trigonometric ratios that basically define a lot of applications that we utilize in our real life on a day-to-day -day basis, <laughs> all right? So sine, cos, tan, cosec, sec, and cot. In short, that is how we say it. And let's go over these three new ones and how we can calculate or understand these three ratios from the first three, which is going to be sine, cosine, and tangent. All right? Okay. So I already have made it here. Let me just bring the screen right here for you. So as you can see, Again, on my introductory video, I had mentioned trigonometry is utilizing right angle triangles. And just in a little bit, I'm going to show you how these right angle triangles come into being. Okay, so let's focus on the right angle triangle. And with respect to the angle theta that we have here, 
which I've already listed right here at the angle C, all the ratios are referenced or the side lengths that we take for these angles, sine, cos, and tan, are with reference to this angle. So the side opposite to theta is going to be the side AB, and the side adjacent is going to be the side BC. And from Sokotoa, that definition, I will go ahead and tell you, sine is going to be the opposite over hypotenuse, which is going to be for this triangle AB divided by <clears throat> AC and cos is going to be adjacent divided by hypotenuse which is BC over AC and tangent of theta again with the reference to theta as an angle it is going to be opposite which is AB divided by BC. Now this is it for the baseline sine cosine and tangent. Now how does cosecant secant and cotangent that is cot apply here. So these ratios are also very simple um, and they just relate to sine, cosine and tangent. So basically our cosecant function which is CSC of theta is nothing but 1 over sine of theta. All right? So this will actually be hypotenuse over opposite. Right? And if you look at our triangle then the side lengths will be AC divided by uh, AB. Similarly, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, which is again hypotenuse over the adjacent. And from the triangle that we have, it is going to be AC being the hypotenuse and the adjacent high, uh, side length being BC. Now the last one, which is going to be cotangent, meaning cot of theta is nothing but the reciprocal of tangent of theta equal to BC divided by AB, or we can also say hypotenuse divided by the opposite. So if you just understand the baseline sine, cosine, and tangent, and the Sokotoa, you can easily derive the cosecant, secant, and cotangent values by just knowing the sine, cosine, and tangent from a given right angle triangle, all right? Now, let's take up an example. I've already made this triangle, and what we will do here is we will, I've made a three, four, five a right angle triangle. Now, again, these right angle triangles do follow the Pythagoras theorem. So, for example, 3 squared plus 4 squared will give you the side length for the hypotenuse, square root of that. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out what the sine theta, cos theta, tangent, and all the six other ratios for the given triangle that we have will be equal to. So, sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So, what is the opposite here side length 4 and the hypotenuse is 5 so that is going to be 4 over 5. What is cosine? The adjacent is going to be 3 so adjacent over the hypotenuse it is going to be 3 over 5 right. What is tangent of theta? Again that is going to be opposite over adjacent which is going to be 4 over 3. Now follow me. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine so that is going to be 5 over 4 Secant is reciprocal of cosine, which is going to be 5 over 3. And cotangent is reciprocal of the tangent, so this will be 3 over 4. You see that? So that is the very interesting, actually, that, that, that is very interesting to understand. But now I also want to introduce you and show you how all of this applies and looks like on a unit circle. I've already drawn a unit circle, meaning some given circle right here. And what I am going to do is, uh, I have a point. Okay, let's pick a random point here and let's join the line and make an angle right here. We join the line and this is some angle theta. Now, as you may have seen on the screen already, this is 45. But don't worry about it. This is 45. Let's go ahead and name this A. I'm going to name this as point B and this last point is point C. Now, from the line B, if you drop a perpendicular, onto the x-axis, we get another point here. Actually, you know what, I'm not gonna name this. Let's go ahead and name 
label this as point C instead. So now you see when we drop the perpendicular, we get the 90 degree angle, and that's where the analysis of the right angle triangles come into being. Now for, again, I will refer to my one of my videos where side length AB, which is a hypotenuse, is a radius of this unit circle. The unit circle has a radius of one unit. So that makes AB a one unit. That means a hypotenuse is one. So what is sine of theta? BC, which is right here, this is BC over one, which is nothing but the Y component. And here what we have is the cosine. So if you follow along on the unit circle, the horizontal distance is always going to be cosine and the vertical is always going to be the, it is going to be the sine. So if at this point B, meaning the point at which we are drawing the, the value for the angle, we drop a perpendicular, meaning a tangent line. You see, this angle right now is now 90 degrees, okay? So this particular point here, I mean, this line here is a tangent and this gives you the tangent on the unit circle. The vertical gives you the sine, the horizontal gives you the cosine, and the tangent line literally gives you the tangent for that particular angle. And if let me show you all the six ratios on the unit circuit. I've already drawn them for you here, and you're more than welcome to take a screenshot of this. So as you can see, we go on. We I have the angle measurements already taken care of. The theta is the angle, and of course, if uh, just a second, let me just also explain one particular thing here. If this angle right here is theta and this whole angle is 90, this is going to be 90 minus theta, the remainder angle, right? So that's another idea to understand. Okay, so coming back to showing all the six ratios on the unit circle, here they are for the angle theta. So go ahead, take a, a screenshot and you can even put it on your wall for those of you learning trigonometry. This is a very useful chart. And an interesting one too on top of it. And that's how you see all the six trigonometric ratios on a unit circle. So as such, uh, for an activity, you can also utilize more triangles, like you can take any kind of a Pythagorean triplet and figure out all the six trigonometric ratios to identify and get familiar with it. So that is all for this video. If you have liked the presentation, please keep the emails coming and the questions coming. And let me know if you like it. And if you would like, please share it and subscribe it further. All right. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.